Here is a coil and capacitor connected together, commonly known as a tank circuit. And if I were to add a 9 volt battery to this and temporarily close that switch and open it, that coil and capacitor would start to oscillate at a resident frequency. And it would go back and forth, back and forth, and eventually die out because of the resistance in the wire. Okay, I've got the tank circuit set up and right here I have a 10 microfarad capacitor and I'm going to use this 9 volt battery here to give it a little bit of energy and across that capacitor is this coil and I, this is an audio transformer and I'm using the primary windings and here's the scope okay now this is difficult to capture but uh, if you look closely there's a few good examples of when I release the connection and the coil and the capacitor go into resonance. The other slope that you see, that's when I make the connection. But when I release the connection, that's when the capacitor and the coil are free to resonate at their natural frequency. A coil and a capacitor hooked in parallel will have a resident frequency and this frequency will be determined by the value of the coil and of the capacitor. In AM radios the IF cans have two tank circuits in each IF can and the value of the coils and the capacitors in these tank circuits have been chosen for a very high Q or another way to say it a very high efficiency for the 455 kilocycle frequency. Here's the setup. I have taken one of my stock IF cans and I've hooked a signal generator to the left hand side and I have put my oscilloscope on the right hand side. Okay I've got one IF can hooked up. The top trace is from is the source from the signal generator. The bottom trace is from the output of the IF can, the secondary. So as I raise the frequency toward 455, you can see the peaks are getting closer together so the frequency is increasing. There's the output of the IF can and it peaks at 455 and when I go past it, it pretty much disappears again. Here's the setup with two IF cans wired back to back and I have the signal generator on the left hand side and the scope on the right hand side. And with four tank circuits the 455 KC signal is just about the only thing that passes through all these filters. Okay now here's the setup with two IF cans and as I increase the frequency you can see that the bottom one peaks very quickly and then lowers again. Now in that AM radio 
there'd be an amplifier in between those two IF cans enhancing this effect by thousands of times. So that's what those IF cans are for in your typical AM radio. To very highly filter the 455 KC intermediate frequency.